Hello and welcome to Languagecraft. Today here we are for episode 8 of Let's Timelapse, and we're going to start off by looking back on the feels that we made in the last two episodes. Now one question that often came back was, how can all these fields exist if they are right next to the sea? Well, indeed, they are next to water, but they're not next to the sea, only the river. The sea is on the other side of the peninsula. I was very careful about that since, you know, like a lot of people said, plants cannot thrive on salt water. That's a fact. It's like, for humans, it basically kills them. But today we're going to the other side of the village. We're going back into the center and truly the heart of this uh, community. Something that truly animated the village and was at the center of everything uh, in medieval times, and that is, of course, the church. Now, its outline, as you can see, has already been made out in red wool after hours of thinking and testing. Uh, we really wanted it to be as accurate as possible. And I did say we because there are two of us building. The second builder that you can see is Teofil, a member of the Languagecraft build team. He helped me make all the layouts of the church, and I thought I would invite him to do the actual building with me as well, so as not to only stay in the shadows. After all, Languagecraft is a huge build team, and we might as well take advantage of that and put forward our talent not only in our team time lapses, but also in this series, Let's Time Lapse. So from now on, once in a while, members of the build team will come and give me a hand on various builds. Teofid is the first today since he helped me a lot on the church. Now anyway, we're starting on the front of the church, and more specifically the base of the two towers. At first I was only going to build one, um, in the center towards the front, but in the end two just look better, and it will make more sense as we move forward, especially with the bell tower. Uh, most churches in the end were built this way, so I thought I might as well stick to it. Now the two walls of the tower are exactly the same and are extremely detailed. There's three layers of details, uh, they're three layers deep, even though the third one is actually only the windows and a couple blocks around them. From afar it looks a bit random, but actually when you look at it more closely and when you investigate, Everything is symmetrical. Everything is based on the first quarter of the pattern. It's uh, actually fairly organized, and the end result is actually pretty straightforward. Um, as for the wood, we added it pretty late because it was, it was so monochrome. Uh, it was missing something, and the wood reminds us of the rest of the village, so it's a nice uh, throwback. Now we're moving to the side of the church, with a system of modules. Now you'll remember that I told you about modules for houses um, several episodes ago, and for buildings such as a church, I think it's even more important. A house is smaller, so we can always vary and have things that jut out here and there that are not uh, completely thought out, that's, that's okay. But on something this big, repetition is actually very good. Even though, of course, we have to be careful not to go too far. Now having 10 times the same module without variation is really too much, and it makes for something fairly bland. One solution, for example, is to alternate two modules, or two variations of the same module, so that you don't have the same thing over and over again. Uh, or, for example, if you have five modules in a row, make something special and grander for the middle one, to really uh, well, have it revolve around the center. In this case, we only have uh, the longest line is four, so it's not really necessary, and in a way on a church, it is common to have a slight repetition like this, so we decided to go with it and not necessarily uh, change the patterns all the time. And so here we have the same module over and over again, and it gives you a chance to see us build it and to restudy it. And we have the same thing on the other side. Now, I actually debated whether or not to film this side, since you've already seen this part on the other side, but I decided I didn't want to skip over parts that were too important. The, you know, skipping over a roof is one thing, skipping over a whole side of a building. In my mind, that's, that's something entirely different. Now, the size of the church may have struck you. Just to give you an idea, 
a Let's Time Lapse episode is on average 12 times real speed. This episode is at the same speed even though there are two of us. So in a way you can think that you're seeing twice as much as anything else I've built in a single episode. In terms of architecture, even in Minecraft, it's, it's not that huge. Um, it's not a huge, huge monument, but it really marks a break in the buildings of the village uh, because it's so big compared to the rest of the village and it really dominates it. So as we start building the transept, the sort of arms that jut off, I'm going to take a moment to go over some technical terms of churches for a future reference. Now the area where all four sides uh, meet is called the crossing. The central part when you go in is the nave and, an, and uh, alongside it are the aisles. The part at the end of the church, often rounded as you'll see we have here, is the choir. Now these words are the basis to understanding and talking about church architecture. Additionally, you also have chapels, of which there are none in this church. Um, you have vaults um, above, uh, you know, aisles and things. You have buttresses, which we've built, um, but we might we might want to change. Um, and they're there to support the walls on the side of the nave and the transepts. So if you're interested, do have a look. Uh, I find it really cool to include all these elements in your own creations, uh, putting it in your own way, um, especially in a build like this where we're trying to be as historically accurate as possible. Now you'll see in a second we had a lot of trouble with the choir. We didn't want to make the exact patterns, um, you know, the same patterns as the rest of the church, and we had done tests but we didn't actually have very good screenshots, so we weren't really able to base them, uh, base our designs off the screenshots. So we improvised, which is fine, uh, but it wasn't perfect and definitely not symmetrical. The, uh, the rounded part could have been better, um, but in the end it worked out, and I think it's, it's okay for some things not to be, well, to not be symmetrical. It adds more history to a building. Depends how you do it, not doing too much, uh, but the main thing is to keep the same shapes, the same blocks, and the same feel. And the back here, you've got a, a window in a second. Now, we would have loved to make this out of stained glass. Unfortunately, as you know, this season of Let's Time Lapse is being built in 1.5.1. And unfortunately, there was no stained glass at the time. So in the future, I might change that, or perhaps in the download of the map, I'll have changed it. Now something important that you can see in this shot is the direction the church is facing. You can see the sun rising in the east, and that is the direction in which the choir is. All churches face the east, and so uh, I planned that orientation for the church as soon as the episode 2, when I was doing the layout of the whole village. So we aren't building this according to historical methods, uh, but we're including elements here and there whenever we can. Real techniques were much more complicated. Uh, for the floor, for example, you, you had a wooden beam supporting it. And we're not doing this, but you may have noticed that at least we built the pillars before the floor, uh, which is something that was done and we thought it was interesting to include. Now, we decided that the church was just too big for a single episode. I think we were right. Uh, it's, I mean, judging from the length of this episode, if we wanted to fit the whole thing in, we would have had to speed it up completely, and the episode would probably have been late anyway. Uh, but we wanted to do it the right way. We wanted a certain role play. So let's imagine that the village built a huge church, probably too big for the village in its current state, and so they didn't have any money left. So they built it up to this point and had to leave it for a time. Meanwhile, we are building wooden platforms. Uh, you can see some of the pillars are only uh, partly built, and that way it makes it more realistic. It gives the church a story. Um, you know, this is... It's being built, and so they've just stopped the construction and left things as they are. I think telling a story is extremely important. Uh, it's very important to me in my builds, and whether it is just for you or for, for the audience as well. For example, here I'm telling you, but I don't always tell the stories. It's important for you to have them in your head. It adds a lot to it when you build. 
In a few episodes, anyway, you'll have the end of the church. And what we originally wanted to do was build a Roman church in a first episode and then turn it into a Gothic church later on. But we spent hours testing and making layouts and it just didn't work. We couldn't, we couldn't make uh, both themes fit in the same shape. Uh, so we decided to go with Gothic right away, but cut it up. Um, at least this way the proportions are just right. So here we are, leaving from the main square of the village, which has yet to be built. And we can fly over the market and see the church. The beginning, anyway. Right now, we only have the first story, but imagine when these two towers loom over the market. The simple fact that the building is made out of stone makes it really noteworthy. And adds to its size, in a way. Now I decided to build three doors. A central one that stays shut, because, well, such are the limitations of Minecraft. And two smaller ones to the sides. A lot of churches and cathedrals had that design, and I thought that was a good, a good idea. Uh, I also really like these pillars. 3x3 three three is a really good size, and this design allows you to switch around between blocks and include many different uh, ones to really change around your design, not, don't have something too monochrome, as we said earlier. Uh, here you can have a closer look at the patterns on the exterior, and for a wall that is only uh, too deep, I think it's a really good design, uh, with a lot of depth and a really great shape. Uh, in a way, a very good balance between too much detail and not enough, which is something that I could put in question on the uh, towers at the front. Now look at this, it's even closer to the lake, um, from which you can have a really great view. I mean, this I really love this shot. And I can't wait to add the top of the church, to add the roof, and of course, to finish the towers. Uh, we're going to have a bell tower and a flash or spirelets, which are really going to, I mean, loom, loom over the whole thing. Definitely the highest points in the whole village. And as usual, here we are with the updated map. Now just have a look at how big the church is compared to the rest of the village. It's, uh, I mean, this map is the first uh, time I was able to really realize its size and just as how big it is. I mean, it's as big as the first neighborhood we built. Um, it could have been placed towards the center, but it, uh, it was too big. It was hard to place a village around such a huge structure. So thank you all for watching. It's been, uh, it's been a great episode and I look forward to finishing this. And thank you to Teofil who helped me. Um, it, I couldn't have done it without him. It's, uh, it's a big endeavor and it's going to get bigger. Trust me. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.